In this part, I'm going to work on aesthetics and uh, rendering material, etc. Okay, so I'm going to create a grid. Dive inside. I'm going to change the primitive type to NURBS. And let's just zoom out and press S and 1. Nope, it's not. Press S and 1. No, not again. Press S and select that. Oh, that's two actually. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and I'm going to select these points in that corner and press T and pull it up. Now, if I go back to the camera, I can see that. All right. So maybe it's not enough. I don't know. Let me just check. Yeah, it's not enough. So then go back into grid and ghost other objects. Press return. Maybe extend this side here. Um, yeah, like that. And I'm going to push this out. There you go. All right. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to put in a convert node because Redshift cannot render nerves. So you need to convert it back to polygons. That's my understanding anyway. Okay, and I'm also going to extend this side because that's not good. All right, there you go. That looks good. And now I'm going to go into material. I'm going to create an RS material. I'll call this grid. And this is one of my favorite presets, right? I, there is a preset here. I can just drop down and choose lead. Lead is really my favorite because it's it's uh, very rich. Anyway, right. I'm going to go to material and place it in there. Okay, there you go. That's done. The lighting's lighting's already set up, so we don't need to do anything about that. Okay. And I'm going to now create another RS material. I'm going to call this carpet. I'm going to choose the preset paper for this. And what I'm going to do, um, all right, this one, um, I'm just going to assign that here. Okay. Yes, I know it's paper preset, um, but it's going to work out fine. I'm also going to create a redshift node by clicking the shelf tool here. So if I go into out network, you've got that right there. And I want to pull this and put it there. And this linked ROP is if you were to go to render view and let me just do the render and you can select this. Okay. That's what that is for. Or actually, no, I'm wrong. So linked ROP, I think is for you to render whatever your selection is here. It will be picked up by the renderer. Okay. If I'm right. Okay, let's move on. What is it throwing? Render camera node not found. Okay, default added. Oh, that's bad. I want to delete this cam one. It's actually cam one here. Because um, it was a copy and paste earlier. That's why it was set to cam four. So I've changed it to cam one now. That should work. <clears throat> so let's look at the render. Okay. All right, that looks... Uh, Pretty good, but our carpet is not there, so you're gonna have to work something to get that in. And that is if you go select the vellum screen, go to Redshift OBJ, select particles, render object as particles. And you need to check that if you don't do that, then it won't work. Okay, so let's do another render. There you go, there it is, but it's not coming up with the fur texture that we want. Okay. So let's work on that. Let's go back to material. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to bring in an RS point attribute. Change the attribute name to CD with a capital C and connect the out color to diffuse color. There you go. You got to refresh it. If not, it won't work. But yeah, 
There you go. It's right there. So I'm just going to set up a temporary camera for now just to see how it looks. We'll call that Cam 2. I'll change. Uh, not there. Okay. Render view. And I'll change it here to Cam 2. There you go. That looks uh, pretty sweet, I think. All right, great. So I'm going to delete it. Go back to Cam 1. The next step is to set up the Redshift ROP. So um, first of all, I want to go into IPR, uncheck IPR progressive rendering, and then go to Redshift system and change the bucket size to 256 because uh, 256 will be, will render faster. So let's move on to Redshift again. So I'm going to go to global illumination, set the primary and secondary to brute force, motion blur, enable motion blur, deformation blur, and particles blur. But for that to work, you need to enable it here. If you go into render, under sampling, enable velocity blur. And it'll be the same for, well, grid doesn't move really, so um, I'm not going to enable it for the grid. And I'm not going to bring in the sphere. If you want to bring in the sphere, um, then all you have to do is copy this across and delete the other one except for the sphere. Okay, so you've got the sphere here. And then you can use a null and say out sphere and create another geometry and call this sphere render I guess obviously you can bring that in by using object merge okay well I'm doing it right now so Yeah, I guess why not? Okay, go back into material. I'm going to create another material, RS material. I'm going to call this sphere. And I will choose iron for this. I don't know, I like metals. So, right, sphere is assigned there. And under sampling, I do want to enable velocity blur for this because it moves. And if you want to get rid of this pattern here, maybe you can enable tessellation. Um, but I think you do have to put in a normal or something. Okay, it doesn't work. It's outside of the scope of this tutorial. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, but it's there. Anyway, so that's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a high resolution so let me just get rid of this pink here okay control click on the geo here that'll disappear okay that's just a flag to render so if you choose if you leave that and if you want to render this grain source no matter where your blue display flag is it'll always render the pink one okay so i just wanted to get rid of that anyway <clears throat> so I don't know what I was going to say, but uh, I'm going to do yes. So I'm going to go ahead and change the grain size to 0 0.02. I've already simmed it. So I may actually bring that sim um, or I can try and run this sim for a little bit and see if that matches. And then once I'm satisfied it matches, I'll bring in the original sim I have already completed. Okay. I'll see you shortly. Okay. So. I've done the uh, sim up to 24 frames. As you can see, it's a heavy sim, so it can only cache about two to three frames at a time. I have disabled the sim, and I brought in the original uh, simulation file in here. And I put in a switch note to show you the comparison between the two. Currently, it's coming in with the current tutorial simulation. 
Now if I switch this to zero, there you go, that's the difference. And it's not much really. Um, and in fact, this tutorial sim looks much better. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I just wanted to show you that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to just jump back to one. I want to capture a couple of things. Okay. So I mentioned earlier that uh, inside a grain source, I think it's inside a grain source. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll check. Yes, this one. This edge length scale. Okay. So I'm going to enable this for now. And if I now reduce the edge length scale to, let's say, 0 0.1, you'll see that's how it looks. And the thickness of the carpet really comes from here. And you don't want to go too much with that or two less with that either. So one looked really good for me. So hence I used one. All right. So that's that one. And also I wanted to show the tearing effect. Okay. So I'm just going to go back in the grain source one more time and I'm going to bring this down to 0.06 so that I can just show you the sim for you. And then finally we will use um, where is that? We'll use the current tutorial sim to render the output. Okay. I will sim it and then I'll come back. But <clears throat> so in here, if I go into a grain source, um, yeah, it is grain source. Sorry. So if I go into primitive wrangle, which where which is where we define the attraction weight, if I drop this down to let's say one, and if I run the sim now, you'll see what happens. Okay, I just ran about 29 frames of sim. I'm gonna disable this grid because it's hard to see. So and if I run this now, you can see that's tearing already, okay? And the attraction weight is just too low. So I'm going to pull this up to 10 and I'm going to re-sim this and I'll come back. Okay, I send it around about 35 frames and I'll run it now for you. You see how it's tearing? That's pretty cool, right? Now, there you go. Right, so now you, I changed it to 100 because 10 won't cut it, okay? Um, not only here you can play with this, but also inside of the attraction weight where you put in a fit range. If you change this to zero, you will see things work differently. So it's completely up to you. You can play around with these values and see what fits you best. And also you can play around with this. So I'm just going to revert this back to 200. And I'm going to do a, a final um, high quality uh, sim, and then I'll come back to you, okay? In fact, because the fact is that this, the difference between the two are not much, I'm just going to render my existing sim, okay? Because this is going to take, it took around about 40 to 40 minutes to one hour for me to sim this 120 frames. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm just going to show you the render. Uh, let's just do a, a, a couple of frames of render, and then I'll show you the final output. Okay. I hope that's okay. Right. Let's uh, switch to camera one and move to frame 24. All right. And let's click on render. Oh, I have to enable grid. There you go. There you go. It looks uh, pretty sweet, doesn't it? Perfect. So that's the end of the tutorial so i hope you liked it and you learned something if there were things wrong here 
uh, please let me know. I'll correct it uh, for the next tutorial or for my, my learning myself. So I appreciate you watching this video and I appreciate you guys supporting me. Um, thank you very much and have a great day.